In this video I'll be showing you how you can create this design as a single path, perfect for Cricut. And I'll also be showing you how you can colour it if you want to use it for Christmas cards. Stay tuned. So the first thing I want to do is just set up our workspace how I want it. So I'm going to get rid of this page border. So I'm going to come up to the Document Properties uh, button at the top here. Click on this. And then we can come down to Show Page Border and un untick it. Next thing I want to do is come up, click on View. In here we've got a tick box for Page Grid. This just gives us a grid line that will help us lay out our bauble. So I'm going to turn that on. I find these squares can be a little bit small. So I'm just going to enlarge them slightly. So if we come over to our document properties again, we're going to click on the grids tab. And in here we've got uh, X and Y spacing and major grid lines. So I'm just going to change these to uh, 5, 5, and we'll make the other one 25. So that done, we can get rid of that. I'll open up the fill and stroke dialog box. So it's just there if we need it. I'm going to zoom out a bit with the minus key. So to work on these grids, we need to make sure that snapping is enabled. Um, we want the second section enabled, which is snapping to nodes. We'll have snapping to paths and snapping to cusp nodes enabled. And then the bottom section, this is where we can turn on our snapping to grids. So this little symbol down the bottom here, this is the um, button for snapping to grids. First thing I'm going to do is come up and create a rectangle for the top of our bauble. So I'm going to come up here, grab the rectangles tool, and I'm going to come up and drag out a four by four rectangle should do us, I think. Um, what have we, have we got the opacity turned down a bit? No, that's fine, we'll leave it like that. Next thing I want to do is create a circle for the main body of our shape. So I'm going to click on the ellipse tool. I'm going to hold down control to constrain it to a circle. Drag it out, actually, we'll make it a bit bigger. About there, I think. Get our selection tool and we just move that over. Our diameter is not an even number of squares, so I'm just going to drag it out one more. So I'm just going to hold down control to constrain the proportions. I'm just going to drag out so we snap one more. Then we should better hold on to it and just move it back so it sits in line. I might bring it down one actually to about there. That looks good. On our square at the top, let's get our nodes tool. Square at the top on around the corners. I'm going to turn off snapping for the time being while we're doing this. And then we're going to get the round handle at the top here. I'm just going to drag it down a little bit just around the corner of that, that square. So I think that looks quite good. Next thing I want to do is I want to draw a cap to go on top of here. So to do this, I'm going to select the square. I'm going to press Ctrl D to duplicate it. Then I want to make it slightly bigger so it sits over the top of this shape. So I'm going to hold down Ctrl to constrain the proportions. And I'm going to hold down Shift to scale around the center. So when we move this out, we can make it that little bit bigger and it stays in line with our original square. I think I might move that up slightly. So I'm going to with the selection tool selected. So I'm going to hold down control. And I'm just going to drag that up a touch to about there. Next thing I want to do is cut off the bottom. So to do this, I'm going to grab the Bezier tool. I need to make sure snapping is enabled again. And I'm going to come over. I'm just going to do a zigzag line along the bottom here. Press Enter. we are hold down Shift. Give it a stroke. Press X to get rid of the color. So at the moment, we've got square corners at the bottom here. So it's just this saw shape. What I want to do is round these bottom nodes. So I'm going to come up, grab my nodes tool, and I'm going to I'm going to zoom in a touch. So I press plus on the keyboard and drag that down. What I'm going to do is drag out a box over these bottom nodes. And then if we come up here, we can click on the make node symmetrical. And this automatically gives us these little handles out each side and even distance on each side. So this gives us this nice curved shape. So as I'm going to press Ctrl D to duplicate that because I'm going to want that again later. Next thing I want to do is select this cap so we can chop the bottom off. So to do that, I'm just going to hold down Shift, select the cap. I'm going to come up to Path, down to Division. And that should have chopped our cap into two parts if we come off. You should better click onto this side and just press delete to get rid of the bottom of the cap. I've left the line in situ because I'm going to use that again in a moment. So that's the, the cap cut to shape. Next thing I want to do is just quickly add a border around the outside of this circle so we can use that later on. Um, so I'm going to select the circle and I press Ctrl D to duplicate it. I'm going to drop it behind the original one. 
so we can drop it to the bottom. I'm then going to hold down Control and Shift. Control constrains the proportions to keep it even, and Shift makes it scale around the center. So when we drag out, actually what I want to do is turn off the snapping. So when we drag out on our, our handle, it, we get a nice even border around the outside. Maybe a little bit more than that, actually. Actually, no, I'll, I'll stick with that, and that's quite good. I'll reduce the opacity of that down a touch because we use that a little bit later on when we make the second bauble. So clicking off, I just want to add these bits together now, union these bits together. So I'm going to click on our square. And I'm going to click on, hold down shift and select our main circle. Now I'm going to come up to path union to join them together. Just zoom out a little bit. Is our cap good there? I might move the cap up slightly. So I'm going to select the cap. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to select this line. And I'm going to move both of them together. So I'm going to hold down control now just to constrain it to vertical movement. And I'm just going to drag it up to where, where I want it. Think about that, it's nice. I'm then going to union them together. So click off, click on the cap, hold down shift, select the main body. And then we can go to path, down to union, to union them together. Now this is where I want this zigzag line again. What I'm going to do is use that to cut away um, a section here. So we've got the two separate parts. So first thing I need to do is get this the right width. So I want that a little bit thicker. If we click off, we click on our line, I want to thicken it up a touch. So at the moment it's five. We probably want that maybe 15. So right click down here and we just come up to 16. That's a nice size. I think it's not too bad, is it? I might just drag that down a touch. So I'm going to hold down, make it a softer curve at the bottom there. So I'm just going to drag this down slightly just to, I think I prefer it like that. So now to use this line to chop a section away, we, we need to first convert it to a path. So what we're going to do is come up to path, come down to stroke to path and click on that. So now if we get our, now if we get our nodes tool, we can see that it's a path in its own right with all these nodes around the outside. So we've got our selection tool, I'm going to hold down shift, select the main body, and then we're going to come up to path and down to difference and now remove the section from our bauble. Next thing I want to do, I think, is stick the ring on the top. So I'm going to grab our, grab our ovals tool. I'm going to come up to the top. I'm going to turn snapping back on so we can snap to the grid lines. And I'm just going to drag out a circle. That looks quite good. The um, stroke's a little bit big, so we might have to remove that or reduce that somewhat. So if we right click down here, we can bring that down to 16. That's just a bit small. So we go to our um, stroke styles over in our fill and stroke dialog box. And we can got a bit better control of it over here. So we want to, should we try 25? I think that's quite nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn snapping back. Well, snapping's on. So what we should be able to do is drag this across. We need snapping to centers. So if we turn snapping to centers on or midpoints, we get our selection tool. I'm just going to try and move this over and it's snapping to uh, the nodes. So I'm going to turn off the snapping to node section. So I've left snapping to midpoints and snapping to grids enabled. So now if we move it, it should snap nicely to our grid. I want this ring moved down so it kind of merges with the top of our cap. So I'm going to turn off snapping. I'm going to hold on to it. I want to press control to constrain it to vertical movement so it stays in line and then we can drag it down to where we want it. So say there. So we've got it in the right place now. So what we need to do is convert this to a path and then we can combine it with our bauble. So we can go up to path, uh, stroke to path, and we can hold down shift select our bauble and then we can come to path union and that would union them together. The next stage of creating our bauble is to put the pattern across the front. So to do that, we're going to come over, grab our Bezier tool. We need to turn snapping back on. We need to make sure we can snap. Oh, we're snapping to grids. We want snapping to cusp nodes and paths again. And we're just going to come over here and we're going to draw a zigzag line Cross our bauble, do one more. We might have to move this to line it up properly. That'll do us. So if we've got a selection tool, we grab this and we are just going to move it over till it's nicely in line. That's there. Press Control D to duplicate and we can drag that one down, make our second line around about there. I'm going to hold Shift to select, select them both. I'm then going to come over to our width and I probably want it about double that. So I'm going to change this to 50. 
that doesn't look too bad. So I'm going to turn off snapping and I'm going to do this by eyeball it. So we're going to hold down control to constrain it to vertical movement. And when we bring it down, it'll keep it nicely centered and we can put it where we want it. Next thing we need to do is convert these to paths. So we can come up to path, down to um, stroke to path. We can then path, union them together, then hold down shift, select our bauble, and then we can come to path difference to cut them away. And that will give us our bauble shape. We can increase the opacity and perhaps give it a red color. So there's one of our baubles. So I'm going to rotate it slightly. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to select the uh, gray circle behind. So I'm going to hold down shift, select the circle behind. So we work on both of them together. And then we just rotate it off to one side to about there. I'm going to press control D to duplicate. I'm going to flip it um, horizontally. I'm going to change the color and give it a blue. I'm going to drop them back. So if we drop it to the bottom so it sits behind our red one and then we can drag it over to the side and maybe up a touch. Two are happy with its location. The next thing I want to do is cut away this circle from the blue bauble. So I'm going to select the circle, hold down shift, select the blue bauble. Now I want to come up to path down to difference to chop it away. We can then select our other gray circle and we can just delete that. And that gives us our two baubles. So if we turn off grid, so view page grid, turn that off and we have our two bauble designs there. What we can do, um, depending on what you're using them for, um, I created this with Cricut in mind so you can do vinyl cutting and cut these out and stick them onto things. If you wanted it for a card you could change the color of the caps. Um, if you want to change the color of the caps what you'd have to do is select your shape. You then have to go up to path break apart which breaks it into the individual paths. If you notice the tops filled in this is because um, it's broken out or broken away this um, inner circle so we can put that back in so what we do first is we click off we hold down shift we select the bauble sections go up to path union to join those together and then when it come away we're going to click on here unfortunately the small circle behind seems to be as i say behind so what we can do is hold down alt click again and that will select the next shape back we can then hold shift and select the larger shape and then we can go up to path and this time when we're going to use combine what combine will do is cut out the hole again and then you can change it to whatever color you want if you wanted to give it a, a yellow color you can do that you can also add gradients so for example you might want it to make this look a little bit more three-dimensional so we can come over to our fill we can give it a radial gradient we can come to our gradient tool on the left hand side what i'll do is i'll line the gradient up gradient up with the angle of with the angle of our cap we can then adjust the colors so the other end we need to be fully opaque and i'm going to click in the center ish or just off to one side and i'm just going to brighten that up to get it give it a more three-dimensional look we can of course do the same with our bauble so if we select our bauble we can give it a radial gradient um, we'll grab our gradients tool again this time we want to make the outside fully opaque so we click on that and increase the alpha channel to make the outside fully opaque we can click the middle stop here and we can reduce that down to give it a highlight or lighten that to give it a highlight so what i do is i'm going to drag our outside handle out a bit i'll do the same with this one drag it up i want to add in an extra stop so double click adds an extra stop in and i'm going to click on this end one and i'm going to darken it to give it a bit of a shadow like so then i'm going to come in grab the center node and get hold of it and i'm going to move it up to move our highlight up slightly so as you can see now we're getting a shadow form on the bottom here and we've got a highlight on the top of the bauble so we can give it a, a bit more three-dimensional effect like that. Um, we could, of course, give the outside of these a stroke to make them stand out if you wanted it slightly darker. We could hold down Shift and we could come in, give it a slightly darker stroke on the outside. You could do the same with the cap. So you could select your cap, hold down Shift, give that a slightly darker stroke, and you can create whatever look you want for your baubles. Um, yeah, 
I hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.